My name is Peter Kahn. I retired several years ago from Penn's English department, where Lorene Carey was my longtime colleague. I have been reading her work for decades. Today I will be saying a few words, both about her career and her novel, The Price of a Child. Lorene Carey is a prolific and versatile writer. Novels in short fiction, nonfiction, memoir, plays, opera. She is also a tireless advocate for justice and a gifted, dedicated teacher. Let me mention just a few of her many community projects. Lorene Carey, activist. In 1998, Carey founded Art Sanctuary, which uses the excellence of black arts to enrich the Philadelphia region. Art Sanctuary has featured such artists as the Roots Band, the writer Chinua Achebe, the jazz composer Hannibal Lukumbi, and Philadelphia's poet laureate Sonia Sanchez. In 2015, Carrie founded, with the help of her Penn students, Safe Kids Stories, which gathers examples of youth, safety, peace, and nonviolence with the kind of clarity and imagination that is too often reserved for the portrayal of violence and conflict. The site features essays, short stories, poems, videos, and cartoons. For the past four years, Lorene Carey has directed Vote That John, which works to encourage and assist Philadelphia's young people to register and vote. Lorene Carey, teacher. As I prepared these comments, I asked one of Carey's students to assess her experience in the classroom. The student wrote that Carrie, quote, challenged me to develop my voice as a writer, offering to read and correct an embarrassing number of drafts, teaching me how I can channel my own tone and persona into important statements. Not surprisingly, Lorene Carey has earned the Penn's Provost Award for Distinguished Teaching. Lorene Carey, writer. The Price of a Child was Laureen Carey's second book. Her first, the powerful memoir Black Ice, recounted her experience as a young black woman from Philadelphia who was recruited to an elite boarding school in New Hampshire. St. Paul's School was attempting to diversify itself after 150 years as an exclusively white male and upper class institution. Carey joined a small handful of other black students all of whom had to cope with an alien and often punishing environment. Carrie's two years at St. Paul's coupled high academic achievement and constant struggle against the barely concealed condescension of many of her white peers. In its review, the New York Times concluded that Black Ice is an extraordinarily honest, lively, and appealing book. The Price of a Child. The Price of a Child, set in and around Philadelphia in 1855, tells the story of an enslaved woman, Virginia or Ginny Pryor, who has been brought to Philadelphia by her owner, Jackson Pryor, the newly appointed American ambassador to Nicaragua. He intends to take her with him for companionship and for sexual service. She has persuaded Pryor to let her bring two of her children, but her baby has been left behind as a hostage to discourage any thought she might have of escape. Pennsylvania law stipulated that any enslaved person who entered the Commonwealth could choose freedom. Despite the threat to her youngest child, Ginny manages to alert the Vigilance Committee, a group of black and white men and women who assist in escaping enslaved people. With their help, she and her two children leave Pryor and find shelter with a black Philadelphia family. The rest of the novel recounts the story by turns harrowing and inspiring of Ginny Pryor. One of her first decisions is to change her name, to erase the name imposed on her by a slave owner. She chooses Mercer Gray, and with that momentous first step, 
she has begun the long, difficult, and dangerous journey of reinventing herself as a free person. With some initial reluctance, Mercer agrees to go on an abolitionist speaking tour, moving from town to town, mainly in New England. Fearful at first, she gradually finds her voice and grows into a compelling orator and witness to the horrific evils of slavery. Mercer's new voice is at once the instrument of her achievement and a symbol of her transformation from property to person. This is a novel that believes in the power of language. Bravely, Mercer reminds her northern audiences that their professed sympathy for the cause of abolition coexists with their own complicity with slavery. The North's men and women want to pay the cheapest prices they can for the cotton and tobacco and rice they import from the South. And those low prices depend on enslaved labor. Without the reliable demand of Northern buyers, the slave-based Southern economy would inevitably collapse. The Price of a Child is a truth-telling book, and much of that truth is painful. At the same time, the novel is told with stylish dexterity and is punctuated with flashes of humor. Lorraine Carey has a pitch-perfect ear for American speech in all its registers, the accents and diction always suiting the characters and the occasions. Her descriptions are also rich and significant. Antebellum Philadelphia, to give an example, comes to hurly-burly life in Carey's prose in its vitality and its ugliness. Here is Ginny Pryor's view of Philadelphia from the balcony of a hotel room in which she has been locked by Jackson Pryor. Below her clamored the city where even the stables were built of brick and stone. Philadelphia had grown in 30 years from a town into a big city. Horses' hooves clopped on cobblestone streets and wagons, hand-pulled carts and shiny black cabs clattered and jostled and rolled. Block after block sprouted rows of red brick houses, and in the oldest sections, shacks, shanties, and backyard houses squeezed between the rows in the damp, airless alleys and courts without privies or hydrants, with neither sun nor wind to refresh the inhabitants. Note the movement of this passage as it shifts from the busyness of the commercial streets to the darkness and poverty of the alleys. Carrie's interest is always in the marginal and neglected. And here is Carrie's description of the less peopled Pennsylvania countryside, her prose in this passage summoning a pleasant landscape which ultimately serves as an emblem of exclusion. Neat stone farms, spring houses, ice houses and smoke houses, corn cribs and barns, water wheels spinning in fast running creeks, fat cows and black and white goats with teats full of milk, chickens and roosters and hens that laid tiny green and white eggs. These were other people's, white people's resources, as they always had been, not a commonwealth she could share. As these two examples demonstrate, Carrie's carefully calculated descriptions also serve to enforce the novel's themes. In other words, places in the price of a child are more than simply where things happen. The price of a child is anchored firmly in the facts of its time and place. Mercer Gray's story is based on the escape of a woman named Jane Johnson. The event was one of hundreds recorded by the black abolitionist William Still in his landmark book, The Underground Railroad, published just a few years after the Civil War. Along with that book, Carrie's novel is based on wide and impeccable research. The book succeeds as historical fiction of the highest order. Carrie both honors and enhances the past she invokes, infusing her chronicle with the humanity of her fictional characters. She also incorporates a number of abolitions 
most heroic figures, men and women whose names and deeds and courage every American should know, along with William Still, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, William Wells Brown, Harriet Tubman. In 2005, Lorene Carey returned to the Underground Railroad in a book called Free. Written for young readers, the book retells a dozen reports from William Still's classic gathering of fugitive accounts. Jane Johnson's story is among those Carey includes. In 2020, Carey turned to one of the leading figures in the work of the Underground Railroad, Harriet Tubman, who led over 300 people to freedom. Tubman is the subject of the play My General Tubman, produced to acclaim at the Arden Theater in Philadelphia. In the play, the verifiable, the verifiable facts of Tubman's 19th century career alternate with episodes in which Tubman shows up in a 21st century Philadelphia detention center to visit a prisoner named Nelson Davis. Eventually, Davis, who shares his name with Tubman's second husband, returns with Tubman to join in the fight against slavery. The ingenious time-traveling structure of the plot serves to emphasize the undiminished relevance of Harriet Tubman's heroic commitment. Her 19th century life is a rebuke to a 21st century America that stubbornly refuses to acknowledge the full personhood and rights of its black citizens. Lorreen Carey, activist, teacher, writer. Let me close by offering my best wishes to everyone associated with One Book, One Norristown. You have organized a splendid array of activities that will surely prove both enlightening and enjoyable. Thank you for your attention.